So this is a uh, prosperity talk. Now if I say that, does money come to mind immediately? Because I got news for you. Every talk I do is a prosperity talk. Every Sunday I do a prosperity talk. I don't necessarily tell you how to get more money, but I tell you how to get divine thoughts. And I tell myself how to get divine thoughts. Today's talk is called The Difference Between Day and Night. Day and night. And it's not that one is good and one is bad. They are experience. They are divine experiences. They are symbols of light and dark. And dark is not an indication of the absence of light. There is no absence of light. Dark merely means I'm not seeing the light. I could live with that. I can handle that. Dark doesn't mean I'm bad. Just because I'm not seeing the light right now doesn't mean I'm bad. It just means I'm not seeing the light. So, what could I uh, learn while I'm in the dark? What could I discover about myself and God while I'm in the dark? While I'm in the dark, could I admit that I have a desire for both the dark and the light? That I get a charge from the dark? That light, I, you know, I've actually invited the darkness in because I want that charge. Because otherwise, I'm just busy being guilty or experiencing guilt. And again, God, how can I know you through guilt? God, how can I know you through dis-ease? God, how could I know you? You know, while you're in the darkness, make the most of it. Have fun in the dark. Let all, if it is true that all things work together for good. It doesn't say some things work together for good. It says all things work together for good. We are here in this physical universe. And I suspect many of us are rather ashamed of it, like we're doing something wrong. Oh, duality, we, 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 we've separated. Well, if we have, I mean, let's face it, in reality, we haven't separated. It's not possible to separate from God in reality. And if I'm busy here guilty because I'm not there, then I'm not conscious that wherever I am, God is and all is well. I'm trying to get over to there where God is, as if God isn't here. And God isn't a person. God just is. Remember, if you don't recall what I've said God is, God is a word that we have made up to describe what we cannot describe. It's just a word. And it's a silly word at that. I think it comes from the Germans, actually. You know, gut, uh, and it's... And it, it was taught in ancient mystery schools as a vibration. That's where we get our, guide, our God vibration from. When I learned that, oh, okay, it's a vibration. Oh, well, vibration doesn't sound like a personality, does it? Vibration doesn't sound like some old man that might or might not give me something. Vibration doesn't sound like some old man who's going to punish me. Vibration is energy. And so I can vibrate. Vibrate high or low, I'm never not vibrating. I'm always working with light and darkness. Always working with light and darkness. When? Always. I'm in a body. I'm going to vibrate at different levels all day long. And some of those vibrations I like and some of those vibrations I do not care for because I'm vibrating low and it hurts and I'm, I'm and suddenly I'm, I'm in such a dark place that I'm afraid of the light. It's like I'm terrified of the light. I'm afraid the light's going to come and uh, be mad at me because I was vibrated so dark and so low. And that's my crazy thinking. I'm not stupid. 
I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little crazy, a little insane, maybe a lot insane. Depends how low I want to push the vibration down, but the vibration never stops. The vibration never stops. One thought of light starts to lift the vibration, and another thought of light starts to lift the vibration. And light doesn't always mean the word light. It could be love, truth, wisdom, forgiveness, whatever I want to use, God, Jesus, whatever word works for you to lift up and lift up and lift up and lift up. And to get it, oh, I'm just vibrating all the time at one level or another, but that's all I'm ever doing is vibrating. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. If my body were to expire today, I'm not going to be worried about nearly half the things I was worried about <laughs> before I walked in the door, am I? And it makes me, I've got that, I've got to win. So, if that's the case, why am I still, why am I still worried? Why am I still fretting? <coughs> Why am I still worried that what you think about me, what they think about me, what I think about them? So worried, so worried, so worried. Because if the body goes right now, I'm not so worried. <laughs> or an inspiration comes into my consciousness, I'm not so worried. With a thought of light, I'm not nearly as worried about stuff as I was. With divine understanding and correct perception, I'm not worried at all. When I know, when I see things as they truly are, I'm not worried at all. I may not know exactly what to say and do, but I could within a second. All I have to do is pray. And what is prayer except connection with God? It's not begging God, give me this answer, because I don't... It's, I'm now willing to know. I'm now willing to know. Suddenly, I have turned all this darkness into light. I have transformed. And so the darkness doesn't mean anything anymore. Once I have exited the darkness, it's not a concern. So while I'm in the darkness, there's no need to be concerned about the darkness while I'm here. I, 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 embarrassment is a thing we make up. Trust me, I make it up frequently. Uh, but it's still something that is made up. Embarrassment, humiliation, stupidity, all that stuff, ugly, even beautiful, it's all made up. And it's, it's part of my resistance to being present in the presence of God. Kenneth, you sang some lyric, I cannot remember what it was. Oh, it was wonderful. Something about, oh, let life become your lover. Mm -hmm. Let life become your lover. Imagine thinking about your life as something that loves you, whether you know how to love it or not. It's kind of like a, a great mother. A great mother loves me whether I know how to love my mother or not. God loves me whether I know how to love God or not. The earth loves me whether I know how to love the earth or not. You guys love me whether I know how to love you or not, and I love you whether or not you know how to love me. I'm not saying all this works on a personality basis. I'm saying in truth. We all love each other, whether we know how to do it or not, whether we have a good story about it or not. We're all serving each other in one form or another, and the ultimate goal is to step up out of the shadows and see what is. Imagine that the next time you are offended, which could be any moment now, uh, that you went with it and said, tell me what's actually happening. You know, highest consciousness, tell me what's really going on here. Because it's not, a, it's not possible for offense to happen. In reality, it is not possible to be offended. It just isn't possible. 
That doesn't mean I won't pretend, but it's not possible in truth for an offense. How do I know this? Because God is love. I never, nowhere did I hear God is offense. That God is so offensive. <laughs> no, I hear God is love. And so love must have just taken place here and I didn't recognize it. Love obviously took place here and I didn't recognize it. <coughs> now, maybe the love that just took place here is like, move over to here now. Instead, I'm standing here, still in the darkness. All I could see is this. Well, love said, move over there. Move over there. So you can see clearly. It's like sitting behind this pole and wondering, why can't I see Sean? And I've seen many Sundays where there used to be a chair there, and people would sit behind it, and I think, I can't see the person. How do they see me? And, and, and I've... That has boggled my mind. You don't know the things I think about while I'm talking up here. <laughs> my favorite book. It's a book we're studying. Search for God. We just got two more in the bookstore. We have sold a lot of these. And I, I recommend it highly. And there's a lot of old language in this book. A lot of old language that might scare some people. A lot of hymns, H-I-M. But put that gender thing aside. Do not let, if that's what you are using to keep you separate from God, step away from the him, step away from the her, step away from the gender. Let's face it, I am you and you are me. To think that as a man I am not a woman, I am mistaken. To think that you as a woman are not a man, you are mistaken. To think that we are actually different because we have a different body. Our skin is a different color. Our sexuality is different. We have different finances. We have different homes. We're not different. It is the night and day thing. When I start to think, oh, you and I are different. 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 Well, it's not possible. It's just not possible. And I like reminding myself of that. Now listen to this. All souls in the beginning were one with the Father. Then there became the necessity of the awareness of selves being out of accord with or out of the realm of blessedness. By becoming aware in a material world is or was the only manner or way through which spiritual forces might become aware of their separation from the spiritual atmosphere, the spiritual surroundings of the maker. So when passing through our various experiences, our soul becomes aware of its separation from its creator. As the nature of our relationship to our maker grows clearer, we begin to walk more and more in the light in our physical experiences. Through experience, through suffering, we come to know day and night, light and darkness, good and evil, even as the sun, the atom. And finally, we recognize that we are on our way back to our source. This alone brings satisfaction to our souls. You know, that's, that's what I think we get out of New Thought is the realization that we are not walking forward, but we are walking back. Back into reality. Back into God. Back into the truth of our being. And if we would... Take the time to forgive ourselves for our foibles. Then we'll begin to forgive each other for theirs. And what is forgiveness except the giving way for truth? The giving way for reality. <coughs> the giving way for what is. If you don't know if you're doing this, observe how long you hold on to an argument when no one else is even in the room. <laughs> Observe just what's going through your head when you're alone in the room. And ask yourself, could I, would I be willing to give way for the truth of this circumstance? Whether you're beating yourself up or someone else and you're the only one in the room or in the car as I have uh, been told, my mind is a dangerous neighborhood to go into alone. 
<clears throat> Today is the day of opportunity. Each span of life is just another extended opportunity for light to break forth within us. A majority of us devote the activities of a day to supplying ourselves and others with the material things of earth. Bread, shelter, clothing must be provided in proportion to the life pattern which we have built. These th things and the luxuries which seem necessary for the body's welfare cannot be made the ideals motivating our daily activities. So when you start to think, but I've got to support my household. Go to God. Go to God first. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So I ask you whether you live alone, whether you live with others. Have you sought the kingdom in furnishing your home? Have you sought first that your walls be made of love? That your floors be carpeted in truth? That your doors be the opening of wisdom? So all the rest may be brought to you, may be provided to you. That your body be clothed in well-being. Could you bear it to seek first the kingdom? Or there is an alternative, and it's one many of us have gone to. Do you prefer the thought, I can't provide for my home? There's not enough for the furniture I want. We need more food. We need this. We need this. We need this. We need this. Which you can clothe your, your shack in lack your hovel in lack, and I don't care what size it is or how much it costs, if there's an absence of love in your mind, it's a shack. It's a broken down piece of nothing. But if it's clothed in love, it doesn't matter what it look like, looks like or how much it costs. That's why I always say when you get to your front door, you declare, only love lives here. And you go through each room. Only love lives here. Declare a thing and make it so. It's not an affirmation. It's a pronouncement of what your willingness is willing to see. Only love lives here. Only love lives here. Sometimes I go through here and I declare to each chair. Only love sits in this chair. I'm not concerned with how many bodies come here on Sunday. Although I'm willing for every body in town to show up one Sunday if they wanted this message. But I'm not not enough because of the number of people who show up here. And I'm not a lot because of the number who, of people who show up here. I am Sean, son of God. And I showed up here today. And you are you, son of God. And you showed up here today because this is what you want. And so we showed up here together today because we want the light and we don't want to hate the dark anymore. We don't want to fear the dark anymore. And so we can actually transform the dark into light. We can transform our unrighteous thoughts into truth. What I like to do is take my thoughts that I don't get, the thoughts of hatred, the thoughts of demons, the thoughts of like, and I say, okay, spirit, take them and give them back to me in truth. So then I will know what to do. If they're my thoughts, I need to learn what to do with them. Your thoughts, give them to yourself. You give them to God and come back to me when you know what to say about them. Something else I thought I wanted to read here. But no, so I will read this short passage. Very short passage. Uh, when you place your focus with the fog and the shadow, you do not see the light that shines within the fog and beyond the shadow. 
You see that which you have chosen to see, and yet you miss that which is there. The fog and the shadow of which you choose to see is a fog and a shadow placed before your, your eyes by the wish within your mind. And so the fog and the shadow are but a misty reflection of a wish. When the wish is no longer desired, the fog and the shadow must fade away. Each one may choose to see his fog and his shadow, but his fog and his shadow are but a mistaken gift he has given to himself. It is given to no one else. It is his alone. And so if the fog and shadow as they seem to exist, exist only for him, the fog and the shadow cannot be truth. For truth must be true for all. But I want to invite you today in this prosperity talk. I, I, I ask each and every one here to admit that only the truth is true. That only the truth is true and nothing else could ever be true. That only the truth is true and nothing else could ever be true. And so, dear spirit within me, reveal to me the truth of my being. Reveal to me the truth of my neighbor's being. Reveal to me the truth of air, wind, fire, rain. Reveal to me the truth of my body. Reveal to me the truth of my neighbor's body, my mother's body, my father's body, and my child's body. Reveal to me the truth of my wealth. Reveal to me the truth of my perceptions. Reveal to me the truth because only truth is true, and nothing else could ever be true. Only the truth is true, and nothing else could ever be true. I am now infused. I am now infused with the truth. I am infused with light. I am infused with wisdom. I am infused with joy. I am infused with the good that is. And I open my eyes to see it. And it is done. Thank you. Thank you.